I'd like to call the 20th meeting of the 2015-2016 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please, please read the quote for today? Before you assume, learn the facts. Before you judge, understand why. Before you speak, think. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As many of you know, former Alderman Berg passed away last Friday after losing his battle with cancer that began last May. Eldon was a Vietnam veteran who received many service medals and commendations for his distinguished service with the U.S. Army. Eldon also served as a leader in several different community organizations for over 30 years. And most important to us at City Hall, he served as a city alderman for three terms and had recently won election to begin his fourth aldermanic term before the aggressive treatment to treat his lymphoma began. During the time on the city council, he was recognized by his peers and elected to serve as council president, council vice president, as well as chairman of several committees. We give his wife Fran and his, and their, and his family our heartfelt condolences a gathering to celebrate Eldon's life will be held at the First Congregational Church tomorrow, Tuesday, January 19th, starting at 3 o'clock and continuing until the time of the memorial service at 7. I'd like you to please stand for a moment of silence to honor the life of Alderman Eldon Berg. Thank you. <coughs> Would the clerk please call the roll? 13 present. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to resignation. City Attorney. We do have, uh, we do have one resignation. Uh, uh, Shauna Nishik is resigning from the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is uh, mayor's appointments, city attorney. First appointment from uh, the uh, mayor, uh, hereby submitting the following appointments for your consideration. Joe Heideman to be considered for appointment to the Finance Committee to fill the unexpired position of Daryl Carlson, whose term expires on April 18, 2016. And Roman Drawn to be considered for appointment to the Public Protection and Safety Committee to fill the unexpired position of Daryl Carlson, whose term expires on April 18, 2016. Also submitting the following appointments for your consideration from the mayor. Uh, Bill Field to be considered for appointment to the Sheboygan Transit Commission to fill the unexpired position of Daryl Carlson, whose term expires on April 18, 2016. Bill Field to be considered for appointment to the City County Shared Service Committee to fill the unexpired position of Daryl Carlson, whose term expires on April 18, 2016. Bill Field to be considered for appointment to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to fill the unexpired position of Daryl Carlson, whose term expires on April 18, 2016, and Susan Lassard to be considered for appointment to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to fill the unexpired position of Jody Vanderweel, whose term expires on April 18, 2016. Thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I would move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support and confirmation. All those, uh, excuse me, we need to take a roll call for that. City Clerk, please call the roll. Thirteen ayes. Motion passes. 
Next, we have a presentation this evening by Dane Chekolinski, the Executive Director of the Sheboygan County Economic <coughs> Devel Development Corporation on Someplace Better, their Workforce Development Plan. Dane? Great. Well, thank you, Mayor, and I appreciate everyone's time tonight. My name is Dane Chekolinski, the Director of the Sheboygan County EDC. Um, just to give you a little quick recap of uh, who we are, um, the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation is a nonprofit supported <coughs> by the city. Um, supported by the county and over 100 different organizations around the area. And it's our job to try to grow the local economy, and we've done that through focusing on three core services. The first one is non-traditional finance. You hear about grants, tax credits, items like that. We know where to find them and how to get them. The second one is site selection, helping companies find locations in our communities. <coughs> and the third is workforce development. And workforce development is what this initiative is all about. As we talked to our companies over the last year or so, it, it became increasingly clear that they were having a more and more difficult time finding people and finding talent. And basically what that boils down to and why that's important for us as an organization and as a community is that when you have a manufacturer or a company who has work, has the inventory, has the orders, and is sitting on sales because they cannot produce physical product, because they cannot run an assembly line, that company will no longer expand in this community. Why would they ever add production capacity if they cannot fill what they already have? And so two organizations partner to do this. Us is one. The other one is the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. And what we started to do was look at relocation tools. And I'll give you a little bit more of the details behind it. Flip the next one. Yep, we're trying. Apologies. Um, so what it boils down to, the next slide, what you're going to see is um, gross domestic product growth in the county. And one thing that's evident, that's really clear is that Sheboygan County GDP growth has been outstanding. We've outgrown the state average and we've outgrown the national average. As a matter of fact, the MSA that we sit in, the MSA, by the way, is the entire county, is um, one of the top 20, it's in the top quartile in terms of the fastest growing communities in the United States. What that has led to is just job growth overall. These, this is the percentage of job growth over the last four years. And you can see this area has really outstripped the entire lakeshore. Matter of fact, our job growth has been so rapid, we outgrew Dane County, which is Madison, who's often held up as this pinnacle of, of uh, job creation in the state. And this area beat them. So what that ultimately has resulted to is the simple fact that no matter how you look at it, um, what I have up here is the very first column is unemployment claims. So in mid-December, there were 900 people drawing unemployment in Sheboygan County. There are over 900 jobs inside the city of Sheboygan itself posted online in just four sources that we looked at. Um, the next, you know, not everyone who's unemployed is collecting an unemployment check. There's an estimated um, 2,000 people who are unemployed according to the state data. When you look at the number of jobs within 25 miles of Sheboygan or commuting distance, you see that there's 2,400. Um, so what I call this is we're, we are now underwater. As long as the economy stays good, and of course we're not insulated from global events, um, right now, we have more jobs in this area than we have people to physically work them. So what type of jobs? I mean, the question is, is how good are they? What type are they? Um, less than five jobs posted. This is looking at one of the sources. Less than 5% five five of the <coughs> jobs posted are temporary or seasonal. Um, Two-thirds of the jobs are full-time, and over one-third of the jobs require a four-year degree. Now, these are job postings. These are not jobs themselves, and these are only looking at jobs online. So if someone hangs a help wanted sign in a local company, it's not going to be included in these numbers. And very often what we find, there's, I believe, last time I showed, there's usually an average of about two, or two to three jobs behind every posting. You might have a company post one general labor production job, but there might be 17 positions behind it. Um, okay. So what we did is at joint with this joint effort is we've created a new branding initiative, but it goes far beyond the initiative, far beyond a brand. I don't believe we can th put together a brand and actually encourage people to move here. But what we did do is create a series of tools. And one tool you have right in front of you, if 
if you want to click on the next one, is a hard copy guide. Now, this guide is designed to go in the hands of local HR companies and help them sell the area as a place to live. The second one, if you go to someplacebetter.org, is an entire website, 180 pages, specifically designed to sell this area as a place to live. Looking at everything from school districts, what are the average ACT scores, looking at where you can find homes, and most importantly, where you can find apartments. I mean, multifamily has been a huge challenge. For the first time, we did an exhaustive search, and we found every apartment complex we could, and we actually threw their name and contact information on this website. So um, that is kind of the initiative in a nutshell. Over the next few weeks, we are going around and talking with companies one-on-one -on -one with their HR departments, make sure they know how to use these tools. There's going to be a little bit of a public awareness campaign. Um, you should see that in the next few weeks to try to get the local population, because every time you talk with somebody and they ask, how did you move here? How did you find out about this place? It was always a friend, a relative, someone that they knew in that area that usually sparked them to come. So part of the campaign is to get our own population excited about it. So with that, uh, I don't know if I can accept any questions, but um, it's the Are end of my Are there any questions of Dean? Well, thank you very much for all the work you're doing in that area, Dean. We really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Next is uh, Mayor's announcements, and I'd like to have Shar Pakniak come up with her um, therapy dog, Faith. Uh, Shar is uh, with Horizon Girls. Today we'd like to present a proclamation. Whereas in, in 2002, the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health and Mentor, the, the National Mentoring Partnership created the National Mentoring Month. And whereas the goals of National Mentoring Month are to raise awareness of mentoring, recruit individuals to mentor, and encourage organizations to engage and integrate quality mentoring into their efforts. A mentor is a caring, consistent presence who devotes time to a young person to help that young person discover his, their own personal strength and achieve their potential through a structured and trusted relationship. Quality mentoring encourages positive choices, promotes self-esteem, and supports academic achievement, and also introduces the young people to new ideas. Mentoring programs have shown to be effective in combating school violence and discipline problems, substance abuse, incarceration, and truancy. I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby declare January 2016 as National Mentoring Month in Sheboygan and call upon public officials, business and community leaders, and educators to encourage all citizens of the city to observe this month with the appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs in order to recognize the men and women who serve as staff and volunteers at quality mentoring programs and to help our young people find the inner strength to reach their full potential. Shar, I'd like to present this to you. And thank you for all the work that you're doing with the young girls in the Horizon for Girls program. We really appreciate it. Oh, and there is nobody here for public forum. Uh, moving on then to the consent agenda. Um, Items two point, it'll include items 2.2 through 2.11. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committee, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on item 2.6, I just had a question. Uh, I wasn't able to get to the Finance Committee meeting, but is there any determination yet on what the city's portion of that uh, uh, refund of excess property tax is going to be for the city yet? And if not, when would we when would we know? There was a number in that document. Does anyone from the meeting remember what that was? I think our city attorney is looking that up for us. I, re I read the documents, and it was kind of because of, because it was a number of years. It was kind of hard to follow of exactly what the liability was going to be. Thanks. Yeah, I don't think the exact number is, is available, but it's, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to estimate it. Chad? Chad can. I think it was 40 or 44,000 the city's share. So we had a 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. <laughs> Um, next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Item 3.1 will lie over. Items 3.2 through 3.7 will be referred to various committees. Then moving on to resolutions. Item 4.1 is a resolution by older persons Donahue, Heidemann, Bourne, Hammond, and Koss, setting forth the hiring process for the city administrator. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, initially, I would move to uh, suspend the rules to consider this matter. Is there a second? Second. And we have a motion and a second. Is there any uh, objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I would move to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. The resolution is before us. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is a resolution by Alderman Lassard authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of special outside legal counsel for a quasi-judicial hearing regarding the suspension revocation of alcohol beverage license number 3126, Brian's Down Under Music Bar, and authorizing the payment for said services. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Um, we have made several attempts to get hold of this establishment, and unfortunately, everything has been returned via mail, and they've never appeared at any of the meetings. So to be able to free up this, this license, we have to take these steps and do the um, quasi-hearing. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please? A second. Oh, I mean to second. Second. Um, is there any other discussion? Would the clerk then please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Items uh, four point three through four point seven will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 220 of 1516 by the city clerk voted to conditionally recommend that the common council not renew taxi cab driver license number 2744 held by Elaine K. Willis. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we had um, sent out two notifications for her to come and appear before a committee and she did not. So we're asking that this um, license be denied. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Is Elaine K. Willis in the chambers this evening? I don't see her. Okay, is there any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred pursuant to RO number 220 of 1516 by the city clerk. License applications for the period ending December 31st of 2016 and June 30th of 2017 and recommends that taxi cab driver's license number 0972 be denied based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions in his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his record as a repeat law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Lassard. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We again had sent him notifications on two occasions to appear before our committee and he did not show up on either one. So we're asking that his license be denied. Thank you for that motion. We have a second. And we should ask if he's here. Is Mahmoud Halim here? Okay, is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 124 of 1415 by Alderman Carlson authorizing the police department to waive competitive bidding and enter into a contract for the replacement of two morpho track live scan printer RMS interface and annual maintenance. Alderman Koth. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. <coughs> Motions before you for discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Section six is ordinances. Item 6.1 will lie over. Item 6.2 will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. And then we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. 7.1 uh, is an RO from the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016 and June 30, 2017. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 7.2 is an RO by the Chief of Police uh, submitting his quarterly report showing the activities of the Police Department for the period commencing October 1, 2015 and ending December 31, 2015. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 7.3 uh, is an RO from the City Clerk submitting a claim from Richard Woodard for alleged damages to his mailbox when a snowplow uh, driver allegedly hit it while plowing. And that will be referred to the Finance Committee. Next, we have a planned closed session. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19.851E of the Wisconsin Stat for the purpose of deliberating the possible sale of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to parcel number 59281-470615 South Taylor Drive, possible development opportunity. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We'll take a short recess of about five minutes and then we'll reconvene. I'd like to let our viewers at home know that the council will uh, uh, adjourn in closed session. So this will end our broadcast for tonight. <laughs>